you really, really, really want to glaze the smoothest power sword you you yeah. ever could. Yeah. It will take ages. And yeah. I mean like 30, 40, 50, 60 passes of what is effectively just colored water. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> let's first speak about sort of the process for, for when you won your first GD. Winning one's phenomenal. There was only six entries in the category. So maybe in analytical the way that I am, I look at it and it's like, I've got 50% chance of winning, you know, uh, which I know we disagree on. If you was going to say to yourself like, oh, it only counts as a win if there's like 30, 30 other models in the cabinet. Okay, what if there's 29? What if there's 28? I get, what if I there's get 27? Saying, when is the cutoff point where it's no, like, I, if you'd entered that exact same model and the exact same things have happened, and you'd have put the exact same model in the cabinet, but there had been 40 other people, I'd who's to say you wouldn't have won anyway? Uh... Right then, let's get started with today's episode. Uh, I wanted to talk today about uh, competition painting and sort of compare our experiences, maybe speak a bit more about uh, beginners entering a competition. Obviously, you've entered a little bit more than me. I've only entered the, the one time, and that was this year. Um, so I wanted to just sort of uh, yeah, share our stories of uh, of entering, how they've compared over the years, uh, how they've evolved. Obviously, you've been on the other side as well. You've uh, you know you've run your own competitions. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let's speak a little bit about uh, let's well let's let's first speak about sort of the process for for when you won your first GD. So um, yeah, um, I mean I I've entered uh, for quite a long while on and off around work um, uh, with various degrees of of result. Um, you know. Um, I, when I started, the first thing was was just look. I just try and try and paint something as best as I can, put it in, and see what see to kind of work out where you kind of lie lay the land. And also, um, you know, I, I went to games days back in the past and saw Golden Demon. So I kind of without entering, I used to just go to go, go games days and things and see obviously the 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 um you know the, the quality back then and see it progress as it has. But um, when I started entering, I had no kind of, I've been out of it for, after for quite a while and, and I had a couple of friends that had done it a few times before and, and kind of got back into that circle. The first time of doing it, um, as I said, just literally paint something the best you can and enter it to see what obviously you, you, how you finish. And I, I was lucky to get finalist pin, which is great. I was over the moon, like ecstatic with that. And I still am even to this day getting making finalists. I think I still think that's a really good achievement to, to, to take away from entering. Um, but uh, but one of the real things to, to sort of like as, as for that my experience has taught me is just that like don't follow trends, paint stuff that you enjoy. I think uh, rather than painting something just to try and well, it's really important to enjoy because you're going to be spending hundreds of hours on exactly, it. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, there is that as well. You know, if you don't like if you don't love or enjoy the thing that you're doing, then then uh, then you ha I think there's a there's a relative amount of insanity you need to have to be able to be doing this anyway. Uh, you know, um, but at the same time. Um, doing it in the most sane way possible, I think is the best thing. And, and I think painting something that you th th thoroughly enjoy is, is, is definitely something that I would advocate. Like, um, there, there, there are trends, you know, some categories can have not as many entries in previous years. And then that category then gets flooded the next year. Cause people think, Oh, no one's going to enter it the year after, you know, um, or painting the newest model, you know, that's been released. Um, you know, I think one of the things, um, one of the things to bear in mind is that those new models that have been released, for as an example, the people that are most likely judging it have been looking at that model for two, three years previous to that competition. So well, that's specific to GD, obviously. So it's specific to GD, yeah, yeah. Maybe not other painting competitions, but if you are talking about Golden Demon, then then yeah, like new model isn't always the best bet, I would say. Um, if you love the model and you enjoy the model, that's a different story. You're not picking it because it's the new thing. You're picking it because it's the thing that you genuinely like. And I'd, I'd advocate that over every other option. Like just pick something you massively love. You fall in love with that model from the moment you see the box art or the sculpt or whatever the case may be. And that would be the thing that I would advocate um, for, for, for starting out. Um, Ventus has said on and off for several years, dating back to probably about 2015, 2016, maybe a bit earlier than that. Um, entered various different categories, single fig, squad, diorama, dual, you know, and, and had various different results, um, you know, but with regards to GD, my GD experience, I've won one in 2018 for a dual at Heresy Weekender. So it was one of the mini demons, um, you know, uh, I'm ecstatic that I won one. It's always been an achievement from the moment I saw Golden Demon at Games Day all the way through to the things in White Dwarf back in the day. I used to get like the, the Golden Demon publications that used to come inside. Um, so winning one's phenomenal. Um, we slightly disagree on on the, uh, uh, an area of it, which I'll I'll talk about briefly. But um, I, I have always tried to paint the best I can, uh, and and just really try and enter something I'm fully happy with. And when I entered in 2018 and did manage to get a bronze in 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 um, in dual, uh, I had painted at that point something that I was 100 percent happy with. Um, 
the scenario with that category, there was only six entries in the category. So me being analytical with the way that I am, I look at it and it's like, I've got 50% chance of winning, you know, uh, which I know we disagree on it's massively. You say that, but it's, it's conflicting because equally, I understand it from your position as a painter. And I yeah. know full well that if I'd, it's one of those things where like, you know, the correct answer, but it's hard to sort of talk yourself into it. Like if I was in your shoes, I, I'm not going to say I wouldn't have similar thoughts because I understand like that, that doubt there. Um, is, obviously, yeah. like I, I entered for the first time, and I, I, I really poured my heart and soul into my entry. Yeah, yeah. And if I'd have shown up, and there had only been five other people entering, and like you said, there'd be like oh, fifty percent chance. I think it's a shame to have that suck the life out of it, and sort of make you feel like you didn't deserve it if you do win something. Because the way yeah. I, the way I look at it is, you can't. The, the one thing you can't do is control what everyone else is going to enter. The only Correct. thing you have control of is, is your entry. And I, I do get a bit upset when I hear um people speaking about like oh you know it's not like a real victory if you've done it at a mini demon or if you didn't do it at best or if you've done it and there was only this many entries in the cabinet and the thing is for me right if you was going to say to yourself like oh it only counts as a win if there's like 30 cap 30 other models in the cabinet okay what if there's 29 what if there's 28 i get, what if I get 27? What saying, when is the cutoff point where it's no, like I, I get that, because the thing yeah. is as well that that's these, just my analytical mind of course I, I but the thing it, that yeah, i find right. difficult is like obviously if you'd entered that exact same model and the exact same things have happened and you'd have put the exact same model in the cabinet, but there had been 40 other people. Be, Who's to say you wouldn't have won anyway? Uh, it's just a law of averages, isn't it, I suppose? like Because because with more entries in a category, you would assume that there's a higher standard within that category because of more entries. And I think that's... Do you know what it is? I think that it, for me, it's just I really... And I don't... And, I, and anyone watching this, I don't want anyone to think that I don't massively value the fact that I've won one I do like it's a huge achievement for me that I've really I'm really happy that I have I can say yeah I won one I'm super over the moon with it you know it's something that I've wanted since I was first time I saw you know White Dwarf and Golden Demon and stuff like that but I think as a painter when you're when you're focusing on trying to paint the best you can and all that kind of stuff if you put all that work in all that effort in and you know um it it, it it is a weaker category. Um, it does make you have a little bit of self doubt, I would imagine, and, and just be like, "Was that meant to be?" You know, yeah. And, and and yeah, you know, it's just a combination of those two things, which I think is the real difficult thing. I don't want to under and under circumstances I not value the fact that that I have managed to achieve this incredible thing. That I'm super happy about, but at the same time, I would love to be able to say I did it when. There was way more people in yeah. the category. I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. Competitions like, are difficult, aren't they, really? Because I feel like that for me, they're kind of like the best part and the worst part of the hobby. Yeah. It's like, and my experience entering for the first time was I was really, really prepared. I'd always wanted, I wanted to enter the year previous and I couldn't get a ticket because they sold out so quick. So I knew I wanted to enter for about 18 months. Yeah. Um, and I'd already started planning my entry before tickets went on sale. Yeah. And then I, I bought, I was literally there like, like 10 a.m. when tickets went on sale. I'm like, I'm going to get a ticket. We're going to do it this time. Um, and I spent about six months preparing my entry. I think it was probably, I, I did a, a Black Templar squad. Yeah. Um, first time ever entering any competition, really. Um, and I think, yeah, I think I sunk about 150, 160 hours in it over the course of uh, six, seven, seven months. months. Um, and, you know, th three weeks before the competition, it was like, you know, it was done. Yeah. Um, I, was just sort of I wish like, I could say that. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, um, and I, I really, I went into it like with the best mindset because I, I was, like I said, I've, I've had a lot of thoughts on this for a lot of time watching other people compete. It's like, I went into it with the most positive mindset I could think of. I was like, I'm just going to go. I've entered what I've entered. If I get a pin, that'd be, that'd make my weekend. That is the mindset to have. That is the mindset to have. Yeah, yeah. However. <laughs> However, you get there. <laughs> you get there. And yeah. all of, I don't want to say all of that went out the window because that's not true. But over the course of the three days, the thoughts do start seeping in. Yeah. And when you start walking around the cabinet, you're like, I'm here now. I want to win. Yeah, and yeah. like all of a sudden, this like competitive mindset that I really do not have. Like I'm not that sort of person. I'm not this like natural, like hungry. Like whenever I play a game, I got to win. I'm not that sort of person. And it just instantly like it's because you're in that environment and you yeah. know there's something up for grabs. I think that's and it makes thing. you so toxic because I I can't remember who I heard this from at the weekend, so I, I apologize for that. But someone said it's impossible to walk if you've entered. It's impossible to walk around the cabinets and not even even subconsciously just all you're doing is looking for fault in the other entries yeah but i think that's the, i think the thing is is that, that that's as a painter that's naturally the thing that you look for it's like anything in life like you the, the, unfortunately there is a gravi gravitic pull towards not the negative but maybe just the scrutiny i think mm. and you walk around the cabinets and you do see stuff and you are looking to weigh things up and say well does that blend smoothly or is that you know uh you know sharp or blah blah, blah whatever how you ever want to assess things because you are 
especially specifically as well if you if it is a category that you've entered and your piece is in you are looking to see or oh, how does everyone how does, yeah. how does the land lay with everybody else's yeah. i think that's one of the natural things to 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 have um but you are quite right it does i don't want to say it brings out a darker side it brings out a side of you that maybe if you aren't competitive you realize you didn't have which i think is a good thing yeah. as well because it shows that you well, that's there's... the thing as well it's like what i took away from it was like it was all in all like by the way, like I got I got a finalist pin. Like that was and I I said and your squad was great, by the way. Thank so, you very yeah. much. I'd said from the start that was my goal, and I accomplished that goal. And I was after it was all wrapped up, I'm so, so, so happy and so proud of what I done. Should be. But and what I took away from that was like super positive because I've got all these things that I really want to improve. Just painting, just just painting the entry made me so much better of a painter, and I'm yeah. really conscious of that. Yeah. But I also the caveat to that was I I left it with this mindset of like i'm on the brink of toxic toxicity <laughs> like it's in me um so it's kind of like like i said it's like the best and the worst part of competitions it's like there's all the there's way more positives than negative by the way like way 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 more i really advocate for everyone to enter if you haven't entered before it is it is what uh, i will say this whether you are a super competitive person whether competitions even interest you i still think just the mindset of i'm going to paint something I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to try and paint the best I physically can. You know, obviously if it's GD, the smoothest, sharpest, neatest, you know, all that kind of stuff. That as a mindset, when it comes to just painting miniatures in general, is an amazing thing to have just to, to make you a better painter and to progress your painting. It's definitely something that you should try at least once. Um, whether you choose to do it afterwards or like it or dislike it or whatever afterwards is, is totally fine. But going through that process is one of the one of the best things i would advocate to 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 hone and make your painting uh, 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 as best and as refined as possible um but you, the the mindset behind it as you've said i think that's the best way to approach it is purely going in with i've done all i can do i've painted the best i can it's a model that i absolutely love and i've entered it and really what you should what i see game golden demon or any painting competition at, at, as is a celebration of all the hard work and effort and the the, the pushing skill and ability it's a celebration of that all those things in there. and you really see that on results day of course when, you do yeah you of course ceremony. you do you know the, the other thing that's really nice thing to see and we we were very fortunate enough to be in the award ceremony for this for fest this year like you know you look at take the young bugs category as an example i think you know if you've been following golden demon as a competition for the last five ten years the quality overall as a competition has increased dramatically like oh, especially with covid the two three years that we had where there were no competitions and then you come back the first fest at head office was crazy standard like mm. it was insane um uh but young bud specifically is a real interesting one because i because it's always a really good barometer for sort of like the the, the quality in the industry at the, at, and i mean this respectfully at a base level with juniors and new people that come into the hobby and the quality over the last couple of years that you've seen just on socials and also on at, at fest and also the previous G, gd as well at, at head office was was crazy and i think that in that award ceremony the the watching the young bugs win their trophies and seeing the reactions on their faces and seeing how over the moon that they are for winning, you know, that in itself is what competition, the true heart of what competition painting should be about. It should be about that experience and that enjoyment, you know. It yeah, I think that, that was where it, um, on the, on that sort of trajectory that I had over the weekend, that was where it sort of hit home for me was because like, like I said, I, ent I entered my models, uh, I think I don't on Friday night, uh, no, sorry, on the Saturday morning. And, uh, I was really in that really positive mindset. Yeah, and then yeah. I walked around the cabinets and like the, no, I don't want to say the toxic thoughts were like creeping in, but like it was definitely there in the back of your head. Like, like I said, it kind of goes out the window. Instantly you're like, I went in being like, I just want to like maybe get a finalist pin. And then I go in and I'm like, yeah, but like a bronze though. It would be like... <laughs> and then before you know it, you know, you start getting into that mindset. But then like it, I, it kind of all came full circle like on that award ceremony and just seeing how happy and amazed and grateful people were especially people that won so many times before yeah, yeah. it was like okay that's why we do it that's why we yeah. get into these is for these moments it is definitely and i think the thing a lot of people just focus purely on the quality that's in the cabinet at that time as well but the thing is you've also got to take other things into perspective um like you said any competition no matter what competition it is it's who turns up on the day you know you could have a painter that paints amazingly that's never gone to a competition like i'm going to name drop now someone in our team but <laughs> but will if you're watching this it's about time you enter a competition um will as an example is a phenomenal painter has never entered but definitely demonstrates skill and ability at a very high level which which could translate to potentially to good things in the future if he, if, if he enters you've got to enter will um <laughs> uh but the thing that i would say is that like it's who turns up on the day how many entries are in that category, which ties back to the thing that we were saying about, you know, when I won back in 2018, um, there were only six people that entered that category. That gives me 
arguably a high percentage, obviously, of potentially doing well. But at the same time, there could be three entries in there from three people that are way better painters than me that negate my This is, this is what I was saying to you, and it's why we have such conflicting thoughts about, about the, the trophy that you won is like... You... You, it's the one thing you can't control, and like I said, like you don't know if you would have yeah. won anyway. If you'd have, if you'd have lost, that's that's an interesting thought to me. So if you'd gone there and there'd only been six entries there, and you hadn't placed, would how would that have impacted how you feel about? I it? I don't know. You know, I think because I'm on the other on the other side of the fence, and I did. I, I don't know, but I think maybe I would have thought, well, there was only six entries, and if I go down the route of being analytical about it, if there's only six entries, and there, I I probably would have just thought, well, those those three were better than mine, and I genuinely mean that, like. You know, um, so who's to say those people who don't have that thought about like your entry, the people who didn't place? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. When you're in that, when you're when you're being insular about it and thinking about it just purely from your perspective and about the circumstances, it it makes it you don't really think of those things. Being honest, you know. Yeah. Um, um, but, it's a difficult but one, isn't it? it I mean, is, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, like I I don't know that I. It's so easy for me to say this because I'm not involved in it and I, I'm not I'm not in your shoes. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, I, I can't say for sure that I wouldn't have the same. Um, possibly slightly negative thoughts about it, but it's 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 difficult. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to come across like I'm being negative about it. Like I, you know. Um, well, I don't want to say negative. Like you're you're obviously like uh, disappointed that you can't just like slam dunk say like yeah it was a victory and like just wrap it up in a nice little, neat little bow and you have no more further thoughts on it. I, I think I I think the way to look at it is like I it's like a it's like a I prefer a fair a fair fight in the sense and not because of my skill but because mm. it's a fairer fight because there's more people in the category so it feels it would feel I would imagine that you you went up against more mm. so that you know and the thing is you've got to also think about as well is like the the judging team of any competition each judge does have a specific key set of things that they specifically look for which is why you don't just have one person judging you have a team of two three four five etc cetera, etc cetera. And because every judge has their independent, independent tastes, likes, and you know, I don't, you've got to, it is, I don't want to say the word bias in a negative way. It's a bias towards the things that they specifically look for that constitute to a piece, which is, um, a winning quality. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you're uh, judging a, sub, a subjective medium in correct. an objective fashion. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so when you've got all of that at play, plus also the numbers, there's loads of variables which give you a potential outcome or, 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 you know, positive or negative. And I think that. When you strip all of that away and you just purely focus it at the, as, as the thing which at the grand scheme of things and the root cause, the thing that's important is, am I doing something which is designed uh, and, and I'm, I'm doing it to improve my painting? And really, I see competition painting as that as opposed, like the finalist, the placing, commended, any of those things, as much as they are really good things to achieve, I think the real silver lining and the real virtue of entering a competition is the is the progress that you make as a Absolutely. painter. And I think that's the thing that rather than focusing on the win or the cherry on the cake, focusing on the process and the outcome and being able to rock up on the day and be super proud with the thing that you've entered, irrelevant of whether you whatever you get or whatever, I think that's the thing that you should take away and from the mindset. And like you've experienced as a first time as well. Going to competition and, and having that mindset, of, I just want to enter it. If I get finalist, I'll be super happy, blah, 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 blah. But then when you get there and you start seeing stuff in the cabinet, those little dark thoughts of, oh, I really, really want to win now. I think it's, that, it, it's because normal. it's in front of you. Like you're, yeah, you're seeing, you're seeing, it's, it's like yeah. it's within grasp now. Yeah, I know. So like when you're yeah. painting at, at home in your, in your office space or your painting room, whatever, it, it's like down the road, it's whatever. But then yeah. like when it's in front of you and like you're like, oh, I'm so close, I've come so, I've, I've put all the work in, like you just want to, go as far as you can correct but yeah. that being said if you said to me like give back one of those give back one one of two things uh either the experiences and the the learning that you had or your finalist pin i'm giving the finalist pin back every single day because what i learned from painting and like the preparation for it is like i painted to a level that i didn't know i was capable of this is the thing it's 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 knowing where you're when you enter that piece and you've done all the best you can on it you know it's knowing that that's your ceiling and I think that's the thing. It's always about looking to push your ceiling as much as possible. Well, that was the thing that was crazy for me was I thought it was the ceiling and then I'd done it and I'm already looking back on it going, I can improve this. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You start you, you start self-analyzing that. And I think looking in the cabinet, one of the other virtues of going to the competition and actually seeing all the entries in the categories, et cetera, I mean, that we've always said it like a photo on Instagram is all well and good, but until you see it in the flesh, be it in hand or through the glass of a cabinet, you're never going to know the level of refinement. You're never going to know factually like the, the the smoothness and there's things that can be done to make it look better or worse or whatever, blah, blah. Um, 
seeing it in hand is, oh, when I say in hand, I mean in the cabinet as well, but seeing it in person is the best way for you to then digest that information and then go, right, next time I enter, I know where mine is at. I know where I need to refine, improve, yeah. smooth, and, you know, do better, hide this gap here maybe or do this or whatever like even for my own personal one like you know i had feedback from from one of the guys in the team that that, that i really respect their opinion and is way more competent with the painter than me and say well you, you've done all this but this bit you can see that and you've noticed on the underneath so now i'm already thinking oh i'm going to make sure i smooth that to make sure that's not visible yeah. you know so i think it's all those things that you get and it's, we're not even touched upon the other thing which i think is super important is actually being the lovely area of conversation that, that happens around the cabinets where you get to talk to other people that are exactly in the same position as you. And you can have these really fruitful conversations about painting techniques, uh, what they find difficult, what their thoughts are, you know, that, that for me is, is part of this celebration of, 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 of painting that painting competitions should be and are. Yeah. And that's, that's the one that uh, that's something you really can't appreciate as well from like, just sort of, uh, sitting back and looking at the, the, the winners on, on community side yeah, yeah, like yeah. as well. Like, I think the, the shocking thing for me was like, just seeing that mass of such a high quality amount of work, Correct. Yeah, seeing yeah, literally yeah. hundreds of amazing pieces. Like you're walking around these cabinets for a, a long, like, you know, like it took a long time to get around them all. Yeah, and like, does. obviously you only see the winners uh, yeah, usually yeah. on, on socials, or maybe you see they've started doing commended this year, which is, which is great. That's to a see. great move as well. It's like, it's a phenomenal thing. Like for the hours of investment of work that put into it, getting that, these are the commended, I think yeah. is, is still a great equally, thing. as you know, like even finalists or even people who didn't make finalists. I mean, they're amazing models. They and still are. Just yeah. seeing that much stuff in person is really inspiring. And you see a lot of ideas of like, maybe something didn't place, but like it, had, it was such a really cool, creative idea. Correct. Yeah. Um, composition. And, you don't get that without walking around and, no, you and seeing it all. You don't. And and again, you you it's very easy to live in the bubble of Instagram or Facebook groups or things like that, you know, and seeing photos on there. But as we've said, nothing nothing beats seeing it in the flesh and having those conversations with those people and finding out the backstory to why they made those decisions or what they you know, what led them to choose that model or do it in that colour scheme or why they approached it in that manner or why they laid the squad out in that shape or, or all those kind of things. I think that's really one of the one of the key things. You know, it's the conversations you have, the people that you meet and what you physically see in the cabinet that makes entering and being part of it so worthwhile. Yeah. You know? I think as well, like it's a, it's a word that I don't like to use too often, but like just the vibe there is so nice. And to be yeah. as, as someone who doesn't have a big painting group. And I think a lot of people don't really, to be honest, is like just being able to speak so candidly with people who know what, your thing do you know what i mean yeah. like yeah i i can talk my girlfriend's ear off about you know painting a model but at the end of the day she's like doesn't really know everything that i'm saying because she doesn't do it herself whereas you can just approach someone yeah and just you know so openly speak about things and you're you're instantly got so much in common with all of these people yeah, yeah, and you can just skip the get like the i don't say the getting to know you bit but like you just instantly have something in common with people and you can just pick up a conversation on because you've got so much common ground. Yeah. And that that is one of the one of the best things of I think from it, you know. Um so yeah, so if you are apprehensive about entering or or, or in, getting involved, then I, I think that, you know, you, you shouldn't be. You really shouldn't. Like it's not as dog eat dog, you know, you, no. you know, that that maybe uh, there is a perception of perhaps. I don't know. Um I think that's because you see it only really like the the loudest sort of a part of the community is is that top, top edge. Well, they're putting out so much content of these amazing pieces that they paint. And, and again, it does. It's all, and the thing is that Everest of ability is always increasing year on year as well, as you see new things and new, new styles and new approaches and things done. And I think it, it does cause a bit of apprehension, I think. Yeah. Um, which, you think that disheartens like people from entering for the first time is because the standards are so crazy. Yeah. Because I think that the mindset is I've got, it's a competition, so I'm going to try and win, you know, like, mm. uh, whereas you shouldn't, you should just think I'm going to enter to paint the best that I can get the most out of it in my own personal painting journey. And if I get anything along the way, that's like the bonus, yeah. you know, so or feedback as well. Yeah. Feedback's really important as well. And you can get that from other painters. And, and again, we spoke about this in other, another podcast where, where, when Joe was on as well, like about, about being able to just go up to somebody and have a conversation and go, Hey, look, I, I love the stuff you do on, on, on Instagram or socials or whatever. Like, can you look at my model? Can you give me feedback? I've done it. You know, I, I asked feedback from a few people as well. And then I'm, you know, and, it, and that's one of the best environments you've got all these people to, to just go, look, grill me like a steak, you know, like give me as much, <laughs> give me as much, give me as much information as possible about what I'm not doing right or what I'm doing right, you know, and, and I think that's really, really helpful. So, yeah. So for someone who's not entered a competition before, maybe they would like to for the first time, what do you think is the best sort of way to go about maybe conceptualizing an entry? Um, how much, you know, time should you spend on it? Should it be 
really organized or should you just go okay i'm just going to enter just just to enter something you already have or yeah i mean if you're really proud of a model you've entered and you're really happy with a painting enter it like you know if you're happy with it you're proud of what you've done there's nothing wrong with you entering it at all whatsoever i think you should if it's the if it's if you can arguably say it's the best model you've ever painted, irrelevant if you've sat down and planned a project and gone, I'm painting for a competition. If it's just a model from your collection that you've literally tried to paint the best that you can, enter it. Like you've got zero to lose and everything to game in various different directions, feedback, critique, opinions, you know, uh, advice, potentially some form of accolade or whatever, blah, blah. But I think that there's so much to benefit from it that it, the, the be getting better at painting as a result of doing that is is the is the focus and everything else is just on top of it i think um but yeah like either approach it you know pick something from your collection you're really proud of that you spent a lot of time on or that you're really happy with the, the paint job or uh, as i've said like pick a pick a um pick a specific model that you really love you know uh, don't go for the cool thing just go for something that you absolutely love as a model because you'll pour your heart into it because you like it you know um, I think that, and plan yeah definitely like you should be using a painting journal you should be writing down your process you should be choosing colors you should be making selections you should be trying to paint as neat and sharp and refined and smooth as you can um, they're all things that you should definitely do so for someone who's not maybe like as familiar with display painting like maybe it's something that I didn't really understand for the longest time was like what, is, what does it actually mean maybe you can explain for the listeners like what does it actually mean to spend 60 80 100 hours on the model because I think a lot of people who've like maybe like say just for instance like a space marine yeah you could paint that space marine in people are going to be familiar with like, you know, like two, four, six, ten hours, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But like, how, how does your mindset shift then? So if you're going to, cause I think as well, uh, something that I, it's an interesting thing I heard. I can't remember where I heard it, but it was like, however long you give yourself for a project, yeah. that is how long it would take you to do it. Yeah. So if you give yourself 10 hours to do something, you're going to do it in 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> if you give yourself 200 hours to do something, you're going to do it in 200 yeah. hours. Whether you spend those full 200 hours, like to the, to the yeah, maximum yeah. or you wait until like the last you know you let 190 hours pass and yeah, then you, yeah. <laughs> you know you're doing your homework at the last minute but like i do yeah uh, um i i would say that the difference is and the way best way to quantify it is to uh is to basically look at the model and i've always said this about miniatures in general is to um is to you're trying to render that it's a, it's a plastic model that has no no you've got to think of a plastic model like a, like a page on a book a, a gray plastic model is like a blank page on a book and what you write on that page is the information that that person then reads it's exactly the same on painting a miniature for example if the model's got leather pouches have you just painted it brown or have you spent ages putting loads of little details nicks scratches story narrative uh movement uh texture all those kind of things you are making that person then read that article on the object as leather it, if you didn't, it would just look like brown plastic, you know, and, and it, you're trying to make someone read that model for the, what you've intended that part of the model or miniature to be. So for example, there's a reason why when we do like lenses, we put like various tonal gradients, you know, catch lights and things to show reflections, to show light source and things like that. You're making that person read that article on the model as a gem or lens or a bit of glass, you know? So spending 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 hours on a, on a piece is about, rendering it in a way that when someone looks at it instantaneously in my mind they understand what that object is through what you've tried to present as a, in the way you've painted it and that's the best way for me to explain it and that's the level of investment you should put whilst combining that with can you comfortably say that every brush stroke every little detail every highlight stage everything that you've painted is the best that you can do at that moment in time with the ability that you have when you combine those two things that is what I would apply to painting miniatures to a high standard. Yeah, I think on like quite a granular level, the the eye opening part of that for me when it sort of started to click was when I first started um, doing higher end pieces and I, I got into to glazing. Yeah, and that was when I started really looking to glaze really really smoothly. That was when I realised where a lot of um, extrapolating that to other techniques, obviously. But I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, this takes a lot of time. Like, if yeah, you want to yeah. glaze. And I, I don't get me wrong. I mean, on a competition level, I don't want to let this uh, dishearten people. But like, if you really, really, really want to glaze the smoothest power sword you you yeah. ever could, yeah. it will take ages. And yeah. I mean, like 30, 40, 50, 60 passes of what is effectively just colored water. Yeah. Like the, we're at the point now where it's so thin. Like we're not talking about paint. Like you, the difference between like uh, the first pass and the fifth pass yeah, yeah. is like almost indistinguishable. Yeah, yeah. And if you really, really want, and you can extrapolate that to so many other things, obviously, like can, so yeah. many different techniques. And that was when it really twigged for me. So for like, for my competition piece, like I said, I, sp I spent a considerable amount of time on it. And for, for me, what that meant was I took every single miniature in the squad, there was five. Yeah. 
I took every single miniature, painted them individually, start to finish. As a character. As a character. Yeah. And even, I hate sub-assemblies, but unfortunately, <laughs> due to the sculpt of some of the models, yeah, it was sub-assemblies. And also, I knew going in, the first one I paint, just through laws of practice, yeah, yeah. the first one I paint is not going to be as good as the fifth one I paint. That's so what I done was, yeah. I bought two of everything. Yeah. And I painted the first one, really trying, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And not even knowing in the back of my head, because I was trying to like quiet that voice down. I was like, this is the competition piece. This is it. Yeah. And I painted it and I was so, so, so proud of it. And I was like, I'm on at something here. Yeah. Painted four more. And I was like, right, looking at number five and looking at number one, this isn't good enough. And then yeah. I started that one again. And I'd spent like 30 hours on that model. Yeah, yeah. And that mindset just across the board. And, you know, like I said, I was breaking things down into sub assemblies, doing so much glazing, so many passes on everything. On the, um, the Saw Brother, I did a lot of freehand and that was on top of blends. And as you know, if you make a mistake. Yeah, game over. It's really not looking good for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was that was when it really sort of started to sink in for me. It was like how much time you can spend on something. And like, obviously at the end of the day, like you get out of the hobby what, what you want. Like yeah, you, don't, you don't need to do that to, to be fulfilled. But that is that is sort of the difference when you look at some of these really, really high end entries is you just cannot account the amount of time that you spend on, on something. Like you can look at a model and you can, you can still be blown away, but it's just, it's impossible to appreciate without doing it yourself what spending 200 hours on a model feels like. And that is, like I said, like one month later, the model looks basically the same. It doesn't look like you've done much. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. But I, I, I think the, the, the thing that really gets me is that the the amount of uh, investment that you put into it, like you have a lot of people that paint massive armies. But arguably, that 200, uh, you, you know, so it's a, it's, again, it's this weight of time. You know, some people will prefer spending 200 hours on getting a full army painted so mm. they can game, which is, again, perfectly fine. Um but then you probably wouldn't give each individual article the amount of attention that you would do, obviously, on the single piece, which I think is a really important thing. I think you, like knowing where your ceiling is, I think, is something that any painter should should know, right? You know, um, and like I said as well, I did all of that, and I was like, oh my god, this is like incredible. I've never painted this well in my life. Yeah. I didn't realize I was capable of it because I was putting the time in. Correct. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. even still, I finished that and went, this could be better. This could be better. I could have done this always, more. This. But that's we, we that's we the great thing that. is, we like all, you say, yeah. the, the ceiling is moving, right? Yeah. So like. I thought the ceiling was so far away, and then I finally get there. I'm like, oh no, there's more. There's more rungs than this ladder to climb. Do you know what I mean? You can you can always add more. Um, but I think yeah, like getting to, setting yourself a, a setting yourself a ceiling for your ceiling is also quite, <laughs> it's also it's also quite helpful. Otherwise, you will be there indefinitely forever. And um, and yeah, I think that's probably the reason why, on many instances for me, I'm still painting super late to the deadline because of the comp entries because I I'm I'm constantly trying to do stuff and you know, I need that deadline of what I physically can't do anymore because it's got to go in the cabinet yeah. you know so I mean that's that's the thing as well really sunk in for me was like you know how much time you spent on it yeah. and when you enter up and I think that's where like the the sort of toxic uh, dark thoughts come in like I said is because <laughs> you know you spent 200 hours on it yeah but so did everyone else yeah and yeah. like that kind of doesn't mean anything. And it's like, to you, you're like, but I put, but I put my heart and soul in this. Why is it yeah. going to win? And it's, it's like, yeah, you, but so did they. It's because you have such an emotional, personal connection to the article that you get so heavily emotionally invested into it. And I, look, we've all been there, like on reflection afterwards, it's like, yeah, I really, you know, like whether you stood a chance or not because of the other, again, three people that turn up or X or whatever, blah, blah. Like, you know, um, I think just switching the focus to, is it the best thing I've ever done? Yes. That's the that's the win, yeah. you know. Because, uh, like we said, equally on that, you know, you could have had forty people show up and the models all weren't great, or yeah. you could have had five people show up and they were absolutely amazing, stunning, and they completely blew out the competition. So, yeah, yeah, there yeah. is that. So yeah. on that note, we're going to do our new section then, of course, which is question, question of week. the week. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for submitting your questions. If you do have a question, then please leave it in the comments or on our Instagram story. Uh, we've got a topical one this week. Yes, which fitting. is yeah, it's talking about uh, basing for yep. uh, competition entries. So. Yep. What is our sort of a favorite ways of going about that? To plinth or not to plinth? To plinth is the uh, question. <laughs> backdrops are very on trend at the minute. Yeah. Thanks, James Tarot, for uh, submitting yeah. that upon us. Yeah. But. yeah. Um, I think it's all questionable on the piece, like, uh, and the way you present it. I think backdrops, uh, plinths on, on the gaming base, uh, bases just on a plinth. I think it's all subjective to the painter and to the way you want to present your models. You've got to think of the the base. I always say it as a bit of a joke, but you've got to, you've got to, you've got to think of the base as like a frame on the canvas. Like there are all manner of types of frames out there. You've got highly decorative ones. You've got plain ones. You've got just black ones. You've got, you know, brown. You've got all the white, all these different things. Um, and I think really the basing option is totally down to the way that you actually want the narrative and the story of the piece to be or what how you want that piece to be perceived. Um, 
backdrops are great. Yes, they are very on trend at the moment. Um, obviously, James Tarrow is absolutely slaying it with plinths with backdrops at the minute, um, uh, which is great. Um, but I think that it really does determine on how each individual person who presents models wants their models to be presented. You've got, you know, the absolute OG king of GD, Angelo Dicello, who is very much gaming base on a plinth, you know, with their uh, models or on their gaming bases because that's how it's always, he's always done them. And I, you know, I like that. I've done that personally in the, in the past as well. And I think that it, the base is part of the model in my mind sometimes. Um, but then you can make really good, um, really good like story aspect uh, entries that have got like five guys or, or five squad members moving through a jungle and you've got a jungle backdrop with some trees on there and they're all mounted to the base and things. I think, I just think that the various ways you can do base in is it's almost like another level of on top of how good the painting is another level of intricacy which you can spend ages on like you could spend 200 hours as we mentioned on a piece but then you could spend 50 hours on the base you know so yeah. so like or you could just take more gaming bases you know yeah. like there's, there's a there's a whole various way of doing it and i, I mean regrettably that was what uh the biggest takeaway uh sort of thing i want to improve on mine was was the basing was a bit of an afterthought for me and i think it, yeah in retrospect that kind of bit me um and it's something i'm trying to spend a bit more conscious thought on it now but um, yeah, yeah. i think the biggest thing i realized was like yeah, there is so many ways to do it. So like, I'm, I'm actually going to change the base of mine now for re-entry, but even little things, like I think like just the shape and size of a base, like it's you could have the exact yeah. same scenery, but you know, the difference between putting that on a round versus putting it on a square, little, you know, just the height of the plinth, it, yeah. can, it can really frame a model, like you said. So I think, I think one thing that um, I think I'll be trying on future entries is uh, just doing a couple of different bases. If the yeah. model's pinned, um, you can see it in a couple of different angles and it rather than just being like, okay, yeah, I bought this plinth, so I'm going to use that one. Maybe, maybe, you know, try out a few different things, Definitely, a few different yeah. sceneries. Yeah, I think I think I said it's it adds so much. As I've always said, like basing adds so much to a model, and that's whether it's a game model or even like a, a even competition, even more so. Um, but yeah, like you know, just it, you shouldn't neglect that. That's it. it, it it's, it's a painting competition, so undoubtedly the 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 scrutiny is going to come on the painting of the models. However, um, the base is a complement, and it, if you've got really well painted models, and the base maybe doesn't complement or doesn't match the standard that the painting is and there's a model that maybe is painted a notch less but the, the basing complements to the same quality as the model that is a notch less i think that still does very well because you've got a very well presented piece you know and i think it's, it is a it is a presentation of the article that you're doing so I, I think that's definitely something to consider and something to to put effort into definitely so so yeah thank you very much everyone for listening to paint perspective please leave your comments below if you have any thoughts to share on this uh, topical episode all about competition painting uh, if you're listening to this one on the go, don't forget that you can see the video version of this uh, podcast on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can now find us on Spotify, Apple, all those places. And please share it with your friends, help the podcast grow, guys, because uh, it really helps us out uh, and we can make more of these episodes for you in the future. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week.